Bless the Lord, O my soul. For the Lord is my strength and my redeemer. He is my salvation. He is my God, and I will bless his name. He is my Father's God, and I will lift him high and honor him. Welcome. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church in two locations in Greenville, South Carolina. Please see our Facebook and our website page for more information concerning um, our services in the sanctuary. My friends, we are the church. Even though we're out of the four walls, we are the church of the living God. And we're finding new ways to gather outside of the church using social media. And we invite you to join with us on Sundays as we fellowship together with a word from the Lord. We invite you to maybe call on some family and friends who don't have a church home just to hear the word of the Lord. Today I have a powerful word for you from the Lord and I invite you to turn with me to Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five, I will begin at the 21st verse. Please follow along as I read this lesson this morning. Mark chapter five, verses 21 through 34. Hear the words of the Lord. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, and he pleaded earnestly with him, My daughter is dying. Please come. Put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power Say power. Power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see, the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what she uh, what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. And trembling with fear, she told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith, say your faith, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler, and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? This is the word of God for the people in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for our time together this day. As I minister this word, oh God, let us be open in heart and mind to receive what you would speak to us. 
Holy Spirit, let this word today meet us where we are and move us to the place where God wants us to be. Speak, heavenly dove. I yield in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've chosen for a title today, Seize the Moment. Seize the Moment. You know, when I was young, growing up, my mother would always remind us that opportunities did not come along all the time. She said the window, the windows did not always stay open and that doors would soon close. This was her way of letting us know that we had to take advantage of opportunities when they were available or in other words, seize the moment before it passed you by. It was in 1969, Williamsburg County had so many illiterates in the population, they began to pay people, literally pay people to go to school. You could go finish your high school diploma, you could get a trade, some type of vocation, or you could go back to college. Well, my mother and her sister decided to enroll in college in early elementary education. And it so happened that they were hired as part of this program. They were hired as teacher's assistants and paid a regular salary. Plus, they were paid for the classes that they attended. Now we know that programs like this don't come along too often. And when they do come along, they're going to close the door after a while. But both my mother and her sister completed college and they went on to earn their master's degree. They took the opportunity that was presented to them. They seized the moment. So much is going on in our world today. You know, these are scary and uncertain times. We have not seen in our lifetime something like we're seeing today. When all over the world, church doors are closed. All over the world, people are sheltering in. This is a different day and many people are fearful and stressed out. They're feeling a sense of doom and gloom. And some people are seeking God and wondering about the times. Some are saying this pandemic means that it's nearing the end of the world or it is the end of the world. No, not yet. Not yet, my friends. We don't know and we don't even understand what all God is doing. But what we do know is that Jesus has not come yet and there is still time. This might just be a wake-up call for the world. For the world to take hold of what God has presented to them over 2,000 years ago in the death of Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Spirit will not always be tugging at our hearts. Jesus will be coming back and, and that door will soon close. And if you don't wake up, you might hear it said, it's too late. So take the opportunity to get things right with God while you still can. In Mark, our, our text today in Mark chapter 5, there are three miracles. Three miracles. And each time Jesus show, shows up on the shores of the lake, and he could have been, I'm sure, anywhere else, but he shows up where some people needed him. In the first miracle, a man is possessed now, you would have to begin at the first verse of chapter 5 to get all of these miracles and read all the way through the 40, 41st verse. 
But in the first miracle, <clears throat> a man is possessed by an evil spirit. Demons. These, this is the, the story about all the demons going down in, uh, into the pigs who, who run into the lake and drown themselves. This man was violent. He was destructive, self-destructive. And he lived most of his life in caves until Jesus showed up one day and delivers him from these demons. The second miracle happens when Jesus encounters a woman with an issue of blood. This blood disease was slowly eating away at her life and she had gone to many doctors and her finances were depleted. But by faith, she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And she did. She reached out and touched him. Power left him. And immediately this woman was healed. Jesus delivers her from her disease. In the third miracle, there's a little girl who is dying. Her father called on Jesus by faith. He was a prominent man, well known in his community. He was a Jewish leader. But he goes, Jesus goes to the house of Jairus and they find that the girl has already died. The Bible tells us that he raised the girl from the dead and Jesus delivers her from death. I want you to notice that in all three of these miracles, Jesus Power is illustrated in his authority over demons, his authority over disease, his authority over death. Jesus has power and authority to save and to deliver. Not one of them missed out on what this awesome God had for them. The first miracle tells us that Jesus is the savior of men. The second, he's the savior of women. And the third, he is the savior of children. Jesus is a savior. In spite of the odds, the hindrances, the laws, even their status, people had to push through. Sometimes, the crowd, sometimes the naysayers, sometimes uncertainties, fears, faults, and failures to get to Jesus. By faith, they sought Jesus out. And if you want Jesus today, you might need to push through some odds, some naysayers, some family beliefs, some family religion, some stresses, some strains, peers and pressures to get to Jesus, to get what you need. We find that Jesus is willing to touch. <laughs> He's willing to touch and be touched by those who might be considered unworthy. Those who might be rejected and, and despised by society. Those somebodies who look like nobodies. You see, the law said to touch a woman bleeding <clears throat> or a dead body rendered that person unclean. But Jesus, he's not prejudiced and he's, he's not afraid. Having all power in his hand, he didn't let the law of that day prevent him from touching from helping those who needed him. You know, word traveled fast in those days without phone, without text, without tweets, without internet, email, or snail mail. People had heard about this Jesus. The Bible tells us that the woman of, with the issue of blood had heard about Jesus. So when he was passing by that day, when he came to the shores that day, this woman along with Jairus, they seized the opportunity for salvation. This 
my friend, is a day and a time we need to seize the opportunity. Look around you, there is a crisis. People are panicking. Understand that the hour is late. You must seize the moment to take hold of the Jesus who has taken hold of you. When Jesus reached the shores that day, there in the crowd was Jairus, a Jewish ruler in the synagogue with the issue of a dying daughter. It was no secret that Jewish religious leaders did not like the fact that Jesus had been drawing all these crowds and that he was teaching a new message. But Jairus, he put aside his position. He put aside his pride and his prejudice because his baby girl was dying. He called on the one whom he believed could save her. In the same crowd was a woman who was pressing through. She had an issue of blood for 12 long years, the Bible says. And the law said that she could not be out and about in a crowd. She couldn't be out because of her unclean position, um, her unclean condition. But just like Jairus, she needed a miracle. She needed salvation. So she seized the moment. She seized the moment. Church, we all know something about suffering and wondering where is God. No doubt we all know something about sickness and death, having experienced our own personal losses. We might even be singing, nobody knows the trouble I see. Or soon we'll be done with the troubles of this world. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus knows the trouble that you see. Jesus cares and he conveys the power of a loving God who wants to heal. He wants you whole. He wants to save us. But we must first seize the moment. What can we gather from this text today? One, Jesus is not prejudiced. He doesn't discriminate. Man, woman, boy or girl, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. If you're black or white, if you're large and in charge, from the White House to the outhouse, poor as a church mouse, he will show up and he'll show out in your life if you will trust him but you've got to seize the moment for salvation. Don't let anything stand in your way. The clock is ticking. Take the opportunity to take hold of the one who died for you. The second thing is you need to draw on Jesus for what you need. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, have faith, call on Jesus. Don't wait 12 long years. Don't go to every doctor. Don't just sit in your pain. Don't let Jesus pass you by. We are in a season when we need something, someone who is bigger than us, someone who's more powerful than doctors, greater than the leaders of this country who think they are in control. No, God is still in control, my friends. So seize the moment and call upon our almighty God for salvation. What made the difference in these people's lives? What will make the difference in your life today? Most of us are aware of the fact that almost a hundred thousand people have died of COVID-19 just in the U.S. in the last 10 weeks. We must wake up to the lateness of the hour. 
Jesus came to where people were in need, where people were hurting, people were suffering. This was their time. This was their day. This was their opportunity to draw on, on him whom they believe could bring deliverance and healing to get them out of a bad situation. So they didn't let the opportunity slip away. They took hold of this Jesus and what he had to offer. They reached out to the Lord who had reached out to them. Jesus is passing our way today. This moment, this hour, his Holy Spirit with the very power of God is moving to bring salvation and restoration, to bring health and healing, to bring deliverance to those that are lost and suffering, to bring peace to those who are worried and fearful. Reach out in faith and take hold just like Jairus. Come boldly before the throne of God and humbly ask for what you want and what you need. Or come timidly like the woman with an issue of blood and reach out. Draw on the power of Jesus by faith. Can you say, if I could just touch the hem of his garment and trust God taking this very moment while the spirit is moving to get what you need. Some of you have been suffering a long time. You may be in a situation where you've been suffering and dealing with issues for so long, you felt like you were all on your own. In fact, you've even said, I've got to take care of everything myself. But I just stopped by to let you know that Jesus wants to be your savior for all of your issues. To deliver you from what troubles you in this life. Jesus, Jesus my friend, good God almighty, he is passing by. And you need to seize this moment. Receive the salvation that he offers. Give all of your issues to him. He'll work them out. Have faith no matter what it looks like. No matter what people say. No matter what you see or you don't see. Step out in radical faith and seize the moment. Believe in the blood. Touch his garment. Draw on his power to get what you need. I am telling you this day, this moment. That this is the hour of salvation. Jesus is passing our way right here, right now, during COVID-19. You need to take hold of him and don't let go. Faith is the key, my friend. So have faith in Jesus who loves you and cares about you. Jesus who redeemed you by his own precious blood. Wake up. You need to wake up, my friend, and seize the moment for your salvation, for your health, and for your healing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My friends, if you don't know this God I'm talking about, he knows you and he stands ready to meet you right where you are. He offers you salvation and eternal life. All you have to do is believe in him and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. So I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with me. And if you really mean it, he will be your Lord and your Savior this very day. Let us pray. Dear God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for me 
and was raised on the third day. Forgive me. Cleanse me from my sins. I turn away from my old ways and come into my life, O oh God. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer and you mean it, then you are saved. You don't have to question it. You don't have to doubt it. But believe in your heart, in faith, in what you just prayed. Get in a good church where you can go every Sunday, where you can stay in that church and get some good Bible teaching. For it's through that that you will grow in the word of God. Amen. Amen. The benediction, I want to pray a closing prayer with you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace in Jesus' name. God bless you and God loves you. Thank you so much for joining us today.